So, man cavers, today you join me underneath the van. We're going under the carpet to have a look at our rare differential. Because she wine. Roll the credits. Welcome to the man cave. Let the games begin. So, here we are at the back of our daily Iveco. Now, this looks absolutely cavernous. When you look under there, you got all that before you get the axle, which is a good uh, 10 feet. I'm now fully under the van. Right, here we go. There we are. Uh, screwdriver. So, sorry about the shaky camera. Right, we are underneath said van. Let me zoom out. There we go. Here's our diff. Now she winds. She winds. But if I turn some flash of lighter on, hopefully you can see. Look at here. This bracket has been held on like glued. That's held on with like a, I don't know, there's some form of, some form of seal around there. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, there are signs of gasket seal around there. I'm hoping, you know, that like, this hasn't got any bloody oil in the back axle. That would be lovely, because that could mean there's a chance that we fill it back up with oil. And it'll work. So I'm hoping. Now the fill level on this axle is around the other side. And that's up here. So there should be quite a bit of oil in here. If that's leaked out of here over the years. Down the bottom. So there ain't enough oil to pick the gears up in there. Do you know what I mean? I'm hoping she's just lost her oil. I know, I know. It's remote. The local it is. I'm going to have to change the axle. I'm well aware of this, or rebuild the diff. But there we go. So, we have a... I've undone all them 13s, and believe me, they were tight. I had to go around all them with a breaker bar, which is not the easiest. But using our impact, we're just going to buzz all them out, which is going to be a lot easier than trying to do them with a ratchet. There we go. That's why I like this one thing with this van is everything is nice and easy to get to. Boy, ain't this a lot easier than doing all them individually with a ratchet. So this back plate is obviously... This back plate is obviously... I've forgotten to undo one. Oh, we got whoa, 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 whoa. We have oil coming out. Look. So my idea of no oil in there isn't exactly right. There is most definitely oil in there. Damn. I was hoping there was going to be no oil in this, you know. Oh no, our fill level is there. Look. So we got oil in there. And that's a clean tub as well. So, uh, what's happened here? Why isn't that one coming undone? Did I not... Did I not crack that other one off? Sorry, guys, I'm trying to reach here to get to this one. Did I forget to do that one? Yeah, I did, didn't I? Oh, yep, that's one I forgot to do. Let me get the breaker bar on that, and we'll get you undone. Right, I've just cracked her off, and unfortunately there's plenty of oil in here. Well, there it all comes. Right. There we go. Right. There is our diff. So, man cavers, here we are with our axle cover off. And if we look in there, there is tons of oil. There's our gears. 
Now, are these gears in good condition or are they pitted? I think that's just oil on them, isn't it? Yeah, there's just oil on them. Now, I'm going to zoom in there as much as you can and you guys can give me your expert advice as to whether you think these gears are pitted or whether this axle is repairable. At some point, there's been water in there. Look, you can see on this gear... There's water, there's rust there to there, which is obviously where this has been sitting a long time. Water's probably sat in the bottom. Do you know what I mean? So I think the guy did change the oil in this. I ought to have a look. Because there is tons and tons of oil in there. So I think we need to have a look and just see how clean these gears are. See if they're worth saving. I'm gonna just get in here as close as I can. Right, there we are. We've got a still, and all these gears are about the same. That's just oil on that outrage, not wear, look. That is just oil. But they don't look too badly pitted to me. I mean, we're right zoomed in. Coming back here to a normal view. And they look quite good. I don't know whether we can get to that worm gear in there. To have a look at him. I can't see a thing. Ow, there's writing on there. Do you think somebody has been in there before, or would that right in there have been factory? Whatever that 7.3 is there. Can I see 7.3? Oh, I can only see it through the camera. I can't see it with my... Yeah, we've got a... Yeah, we've got a mark on there, 737. Come on, get focus camera. There you go, 737 something. Come on, get focused. There we go, 737. Yeah, so we're having a look. Do you know them worm gears? From what I can see of them, I'm actually looking at them now with my naked eye. They don't look too bad at all. And neither do these planetary gears in here. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking we're going to have to at some point, maybe after the van is on the road, actually take the diff out, pull the half shafts, disconnect the prop shaft there, pull the diff out, so I think only hold in with these four bolts and the flange on the front. I think once your half shafts are out and your prop shaft is disconnected, there's four bolts number, I believe the whole diff come out of the carrier. And then we can perhaps replace the bearings and hope that shut her up. Because I don't really fancy the job of changing this axle because it looks heavy. Trust me, there is nothing like duty about an Iveco daily. These make transits look like damn Tonka toys. They really do. I mean, look at the size of the chassis on them. But there you go. Anyhow, this was a quick video to have a look at our diff. Now, truth be known, I haven't really test-driven this van at all. Because when we went to look at it, we drove it sort of down a private road. Where the garage was, there was a private road about three-quarters of a mile long, which went down to a small industrial estate. But that was only one of these little old narrow roads, which was like, uh, what do you call it, like concrete sort of block. I call it like the old commercial sort of air st airfield style road with the old concrete sectional road. And to be honest with you, you couldn't go very quick. I think the quickest I ever went in this van was about 20. But then the brakes started stinking because they were seized up. And oh, nightmare, because she hadn't been on the road three years. And that started stinking her bloody burn on brakes. So we came back. But I did hear a slight whine in the back end. If it ain't that bad, I'll live with it. But I'm thinking if it's bad at 
you know, if you can hear it at 20, you're definitely going to hear it at 50. But there you go, we shall see. So, this was just it, to have a look in this back axle of the daily. Let me show you. Let me get my way out of here. God, Jesus. Ow! Caught my backside. Oh, we're not out from under the van yet. <laughs> God, this was a long thing. <laughs> there we go. Finally. All right. Look how much distance we got from the back of the van to that axle. Here is the diff cover. Now that tiger seal and crap on there, look on the inside. Somebody's welded a patch in there, look. So I reckon at some point, this thing, this bit which a load sensor valve go on, obviously broke off. And what someone's done is they've took that rear diff cover off and welded her up and they've just brushed some stuff on the outside there to make sure it don't leak so that's as far as we're going to get I'm going to leave that overnight to drain and yeah but the oil to be honest with you looks alright and they don't look any broken sawdust unless the noise I heard was gearbox but it sounded a bit diffy to me like when you let your foot off the gas the noise went when you put your foot on the gas the noise come back i think it was sounded diffy to me sounded very much at the back but we'll see or was it just these big tires whining these big old off-road tires are they just noisy tires going along on that old concrete you know maybe it was just noise off the concrete really it sounded diffy to me i'm just trying to make excuses but there we go you've seen where are we? Turn this flash off. There we go. You have seen the diff now on the van. So, you know as much as I do. But we have, we have our front end fitted back up. I know the bumper's not held up yet, but that's because I've got to do some welding on a bracket under there. The bumper bracket between the bumper and the chassis has virtually rotted through. But we have our front end back in after doing our cam belt. We are our other new indicators turned up. So, oh, don't them indicators look good. We've got lovely new indicators. Here we go. Grill, front panel, bonnet, the whole lot has gone in there nicely. There's our lovely new seats for those of you that haven't seen. Oh, my brand new cab mat has got mud on it. Look, Hoover time. There we go. We have these lovely, lovely seats I put in this camper. The captain's seat. You know, this van's quite nice. That's got lecky windows, central lock and power steering. We haven't got air conditioning, which is unfortunate. But, yeah, we've got some other bits done. We have the roof done. We have all the bedding at the back there. We are getting the old girl done. And... We've got all new brakes. Let me show you what we've got to put on here. Because you're not so sure of what we've got to put on here, have you? I haven't showed you all this. Here we go. What have we got in here? In here we have... Hang on. Brake caliper slider bolts. Because these brakes on this, they weren't so good. They were very sticky. So me and Mrs. Man Cave decided we'd go a bit hog. We have Napa parts. Look, there we go. These are rear brake pads, I believe. These are front brake pads. In here, we have rear brake calipers, one pair. In here, we have front calipers, one pair. One pair of front discs, one pair of rear discs. So we have a set of four discs, two new front calipers, two new back calipers. Yes, this cost a fortune. But once they're done, they're done. And we know it's going to be good. Here we have 10 metres of pipe so we can install our water system, our hot and cold water. The relays, 
batteries are in. Bear in mind they are temporary. That warrant of that fuse box is not permanent. So we've got a split charger there, fuse box, two batteries. That's working. We've trimmed all the back doors and got that looking really nice. Let's come back round and have a look inside. I know some of you guys, some of you guys may not have done. You may have forgotten exactly what we've done. Let's zoom out. Here we go. There is our cam belt kit, which we've just fitted. There's our old indicator. The one which had water in. That can, in fact, go with this one in the bin. We have our onboard water tank ready to go in, but we have a cooker in. We have a fridge in, seating in, captain seat in. In the back here, we have full, well, this is actually a queen size mattress, long ways in the van. So we've got these little pods down the side. And if I touch that light, there you go. That's a touch light that works. Touch. There we are. Look at that. So we have touch lights in it that are working if I find this switch down here this turns on the down lighters which are in the ceiling there you go so we've got so much of this done our pods are in they're not screwed down at the minute they've got to come right back to there do you see what I mean and this has got to be a shelf where we can charge our phone so I've got to put some holes in here and some USB sockets in there so we can charge phones and that. One either side. So this will be Mr. and Mrs. side. So we have got more done than you think. The sleeping area is actually looking really good. I have some shelves which are going to go all the way along. We're going to put some cupboards in the top air lockers for clothes. Some lockers along the top there which will box all this insulation in. Here's our kitchen with our very retro caravan and cat splashback. So uh, yes, that's a lovely little splashback. And what we got here, let's look at our retro splashback. We have a crow, we have a bird, we have a goldfish in a bowl with an egg. Now how cool is this? It's just so out there. A chair on the bow of a tree, a swing on the bow of a tree, a little hole with a squirrel, we have a sniggering hound there, a star t-shirt, another bird, and a cat in the caravan, and the owl. I mean, this thing, this is metal, this. It's metal. That was on Swaffham Auction one Saturday. It's quite big. I think that's 1.2 metres by a metre. That's a fair size. Four by three, I think. I wanted this. I thought, no one else is going to want that splashback. It was the very last thing in the auction. The very last thing lying on the floor. People have been walking on this all day. Muddy footprints. But it's tin. Thick tin as well. I mean, that's not Tilly Willy. That is a thick thing. And I loved it. <sighs> and the bin started at one pound. I thought, brilliant. Someone went two, I went three. And I thought, yep, I'm going to get this now. Do you know, there was the auctioneer, her husband, and three of us. Everyone else had gone, because this was the last thing outside on the floor. Three people left, and all three of us wanted this bloody sign. And I ended up having to pay 16 bloody quid for some old gal. About a hundred stood there, hiccuped up with a hand up the hand. I thought, Jesus, I would you blood, I'm going to have it. You know, I was going to have it. I got bid and envy there and I had to have it because I just love it. But there you go. On here we have our American diner style wall covering this side, which is right to the bottom behind that chair. That's in the means of, there you go, look, straight from the range. I can't remember what this is, two metre? No, it ain't two metres. It's a metre and a half, I think. Yeah, it's about four foot. So we've got a big roll of that, which is this stuff. Yeah. We've made our end panels with our Jack Daniel, our sort of booze wallpaper. Here's our cooker. Brand new look. Look at that. 
Look at that, brand new. <laughs> Hob, this is all plumbed in. So if we turn our gas on, this will work. Yeah, if we, no, oh, I ain't turned the bloody gas on you, twonk, have I? Yeah, that all works though. Kitchen worked up, another end in there. So we're getting there, we're getting there, guys. There's our water tank, which is going to live somewhere here. Shower try has gone here. So we're definitely, definitely making damn good headroom. But there we go. Oh, I ain't turned them lights off in the back there. So yes, I say there's a lot of systems actually working on this. Do my switch. There we go. There we go. So you've had a look round the van. We've had a look at the back axle. We have the brakes to do. I've got a little bit of welding to do. On the inner sills at the back there either side right at the bottom that's like separated so i gotta weld some plates on there the whiny diff to be honest with you i'm not that concerned about it at the minute i should do that after i've got it on the road there's only so many hours in the day and so many pounds in the budgets till we have to save so this side bodywork wise is done you have seen my you see me do the paint put the red stripe on so this side is pretty much done. We've got a spare wheel, which we're going to put on the door. That's going to come up here, which will hide these horrible dents up. Hide a multitude of sins having a spare wheel on there, because that door is good. So we're putting it on this door. Now, hide them dents. There we go. But there we go. There is our van. It's extra long wheelbase. I V cool daily. So you can see, yeah, she's big. She's a very big van. A long wheelbase sprinter comes to where that line is. See that line? That's where a long wheelbase sprinter ends. So you guys with the sprinters, you've basically got this much van. Iveco, we get that extra six foot. This is huge. Now, there we go. I say this is extra long wheelbase. Hence why we've got eight feet behind these rear wheels. Right there. Gigantuan. <laughs> She's a lovely big fan. I absolutely love it. <coughs> That's why I managed to get the bed long ways in there. You know, because a lot of people have the beds going crossways. Where you got no head, no foot room, you sleep in siders, you got to climb over each other to get in and out. Well, I don't want that. I thought, well, how the bed enter in so we can just climb in. And in the mornings, we can sit up, fling the back doors open, and look out over the wilderness with a cup of tea. There we go. Right, that's it. I'm waffling. Absolutely waffling. And I'm going to go home. Because it's starting to get cold, I'm just going to tidy my tools up, leave that diff to dry in overnight, and get the hell out of Dodge. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching. Sorry about the waffle. And we will see you guys next time with our Dodgy diff cover. Bye bye for now. Ha <laughs> ha!